Tim's career was derailed by injury, Josh is due to age and poor life decisions, so what about former Cy Young Award winner Johan Santana? If you've seen the new Spider-Man movie, J.B. Smoove's character may have the answer. Witches. <laughs> The East, bro. I'm only half kidding there, as I do think there may be some dark sports magic at play in this tale, but there are some other logical explanations that we will discuss throughout this story. Buckle up and relax my friends, let's get into the third episode of my new favorite series. So let's first discuss how we got to the major leagues. Johan was born in the South American nation of Venezuela. He didn't pitch in a game until he was a teenager because he began his Little League career as a shortstop. His dad was also a popular semi-pro shortstop, which will play a bigger role in just a second. Just like myself when I was in Little League, Johan was a lefty who had a thing for playing in the middle infield. But unlike my lame ass, he taught himself to throw right-handed so he could play the position he wanted to. Johan tried out for a team when he was a kid and didn't have a good first tryout. So what does my man do? He shows up the very next day flexing in his dad's jersey and got a very different reception from the coaches. So young Johan was playing lots of ball, climbing up the ranks and making a lot of noise in Venezuela's national baseball tournament. So much noise, in fact, that it caught the attention of major league teams one continent up north. Analogous to how Michael Chadwick and Roy Silver got Josh Hamilton to where he needed to be in our last story, Andres Rayner of the Houston Astros organization got Johan where he needed to be. With no funding given to him from the Astros, Rayner spent his own money to buy a car to drive through the Andes Mountains just to go see Johan in Venezuela. He got him to come work out at Houston's facility, with the permission of his parents of course, and he started there as a center fielder. He eventually began pitching and even tried to leave because he didn't like it, but Rayner convinced him to stay, which proved to be the right decision. Santana spent the next several years in the minor leagues, learning how to pitch, as well as getting accustomed to living in a different country. He left the Astros organization through the Rule 5 draft in 1999 and became a Minnesota twin. He made his major league debut the following year and even got his first win against his former team. He had a pretty rough freshman year and ran into an elbow injury in 2001 that sidelined him for most of the season. 2002 was the year Santana really kicked it into another gear. He went to the minor leagues for a few months to perfect his changeup, and by the time he came back, he had one of the best in baseball. He finished with a 2.99 ERA in 27 games, in which he started 14 of them in 2002, and the Twins had a really good year as well, making an ALCS appearance. Now a powerhouse in the AL Central, the Twins marched back to the playoffs in 2003 with Santana as their ace. He didn't start the season that way though, as he was more of a bullpen arm for the first half of the season. He was relieved to finally be given a rotation spot, and he never looked back, going 8-0 down the stretch in midsummer. 2004 was Johan's first Cy Young season, and the first of three consecutive strikeout leading seasons. He went 13-0 with a 1.18 earned run average in the second half, and the Cy Young voting that year was unanimous. He led the league in strikeouts, ERA, on-base percentage slugging, whip, strikeouts per nine, and batting average allowed. The only two things that stopped Santana in 2005 from winning his second consecutive Cy Young were Mariano Rivera and the best pitcher of all time. You can't really blame him for that one. In 2006, Santana became the 35th pitcher in Major League history to win the pitching triple crown, an absolutely dominant season en route to his second Cy Young in three years. Not as dominant as old Haas Radburn, who went 60-12 with a 1.38 in 1884 en route to a triple crown, though. Hey, the more you know. After a good yet relatively underwhelming 2007 season, the Twins were looking for trade partners for the two-time Cy Young winner. The Mets were the ones most willing to part with prospects to acquire Santana, those including Philip Humber and Carlos Gomez. Gee, gee, gee. Y'all seen me? The trade was complete, and Johan was on his way to the Big Apple. Santana was one of the last free agents who were able to come to the Mets and perform better than the year before. He led the National League in ERA in his first season with the team, and smoothly transitioned into a big sports market atmosphere. Even though the Mets were disappointing in both 2009 and 2010, Santana still pitched well as the team's ace. What's important to note for both of these seasons, similarly to 2008 as well, is Santana underwent surgery at the end of the season. These injuries building up were key factors in the downfall of one of the great pitchers of his time. After missing all of 2011, Santana returned in 2012, which would end up being his last season, and the year I can finally clarify my witch's comment from earlier. I'm going to skip ahead to the only important part of that season on June 1st. The Mets had never thrown a no-hitter in their 50-year history, and as far as I'm concerned, they still haven't. But that's not what the history books say. During the game, former Met Carlos Beltran hit a ball down the line that was called foul. Replay wasn't available at the time, but the ball was clearly fair. But nevertheless, the foul call stood. With help from Mike Baxter in left field and manager Terry Collins who let him throw 134 pitches, Johan Santana had the quote, first no-hitter in New York Mets history. Fun fact, I actually drove past City Field that same day on my way to the city, which I still find pretty awesome. That was pretty much it for Johan. 
Throwing that many pitches when he was on a pitch limit throughout the season clearly accelerated his decline. That was his last good moment, and I guess a no-hitter to close out a career like that is about as sweet as it could get without making it to a World Series. He had a few more DL stints after the no-hitter, he missed all of 2013, and his time with the Mets was over. He tried making a comeback in 2014 and 2015 with the Orioles and Blue Jays, but couldn't make it work, and that was the end of the career of Johan Santana. Since leaving the major leagues, Santana has talked about making a comeback several times, as recently as last year. He was also elected to the Twins Hall of Fame last August, which was pretty great to see. I'm pretty sure that would make him ineligible to return, but I couldn't find any clarity on that rule, so don't quote me on that. Nowadays, the great Nohan seems to be enjoying life as it comes, without a worry in the world. He's also made some guest appearances on Twins broadcasts. So what's with all this dark magic witches stuff? Well, my dad and I have a working theory. We, we believe Johan sold his soul to the Wilpons to be able to throw a no-hitter, and that's why he wasn't able to continue his career much longer after that. A much better explanation that has some sort of ground in reality could be found by taking a look at just how many times Johan was hurt towards the end of his career. Which could also be explained by the dark magic behind the Mets' injury curse, but I'll stick to the logical explanation here. A bunch of surgeries and a large handful of minor DL stints really killed Santana. That 135 pitch outing a year after major surgery, when they should have kept him on his pitch limit, really seemed to be the final straw. A career cut short at 33 years old was a shame for someone as good as Johan was, but to have many great seasons, a pitching triple crown, and two Cy Youngs at such a young age isn't too shabby either. Johan is one of my favorite players ever, and it was truly a privilege to watch him play for my favorite team. Looks like Andres Rayner was right to drive all that way to see Johan back in Venezuela. Tip of the cap to you, my friend. Let me know who you'd like me to cover next in the comments, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll talk to you all later. I call the shots, I run the balls, I'm Michael Jordy. Hit it with a little bit of push and a little bit of pull when a goddamn mic recording. I bring the heat, I rep the east, I'm like the sounds. I don't even know what to do with the gold that I get, bitch, I'm Michael Phelps. I'm like LeBron, I get the gold, I'm Sherry Khan, yo, carry bronze. I'm Randy Moss, I'm Mary Khan, my game on boys, I'm Barry Bonds. I got a